Hello everyone, welcome to my Minecraft Let's Play. This is Mike as usual. Uh, I have a lot of things to show you and I have a lot planned for this episode. So first, I've closed this wall, I'm starting to make it a little bit more tidy. I've also expanded this area back here. So now i got a nice window over to my garden. Uh, another window to my garden. And I have a lot of space to build. I have some windows looking down into my cactus farm. Which I love. And I like the view. And I have some space to start building some... Well, let's call it new automation. So, in the last episode we started with our AMI network. Now it's time time to start automating using it. I've greatly upgraded so now I have a lot of, of these storage cells. I'll probably change this once I'm ready. I don't know yet where to so for now I'm going to leave it this way but anytime soon uh, we'll change this place. So let's get on to the auto crafting system which is what I want to work on today. So as usual Using my work tables, I've prepared some, some recipes here. And in terms of recipes, there are some basic blocks you need for the crafting system. The first thing we are going to build is, well, a multi block structure that uses assembler containment walls, which are quite simple to make. It uses uh, crafting CPUs, it uses heat vents, and it uses pattern providers. Uh, and this is really really simple. It's a simple build which we'll get onto anytime soon. I'm going to need I think maybe three more of these. Okay. Uh, I have most of the recipes in here. Ah dang. I need three of these at least. One, two, three. Okay, great. Right here. One, two, three. I'm going to need some extra gold as well. And I've prepared something here to make more gold. I'm still using these slag things. They are quite useful. And since we don't have... Well, we have 18 of these. We are going to take them all with us. Because they will come in handy. And meanwhile, I'm going to put the witch slag cooking with the gold ore so, so that we trip the ores there. So we get about 90 ores. Ores, not ores, but bars. So, uh, but with this gold, I think we can get started. So, this is a multi block, uh, block structure. For the multi block structure, we'll need the assign, uh, assembler containment wall. Uh, and this will be the, the frame of our machine. And, uh, I have more gold around here, but maybe I don't. Okay, this is the frame of our machine. Then we'll need heat vents, and these will be the walls. And inside the, the block will be hollow, except for all the places where I place pattern providers and crafting CPUs. And the pattern providers, they basically uh, are what t uh, allows you to have more crafting recipes, <coughs> and the crafting CPU allows the system to be faster. This are the, these are the basics. So we'll start only with one crafting CPU and one pattern provider, which I already have somewhere here. Well, yeah, we have the encoder and we'll see the encoder further into the, the episode. And we have a crafting CPU. And now we are going to build a lot of heat vents. Uh, I believe 12 heat vents and 38 assembler containment walls and uh, 30, uh, 36 actually, 36 times 2, 72 times 2 will be then 174 gold bars. That will take us a while, so I'm just going to quickly gather the gold and all the base materials and build them and then we'll build the multi block structure. Okay, I'm back. I have all of the materials I'll need. I have my containment walls, I have my heat vents, and I have my crafting CPUs and my pattern provider. So let's start off by building our multi-block structure. So, uh, as I told you before, 
the way this works is really simple so you need to uh, make the corners all of them out of containment walls and I'm going to make it 5 by 5 so 1 2 3 4 5 2 3 4 5 2 3 4 5 and yeah, we'll do these by the way then the top this and like this Okay, we'll close this area in the end. Then we'll need to close off the top with heat lamps. Like this. The sides as well. Whoops. Thought I had enough heat lamps. Didn't count on them. Let me just make a few heat lamps. I think I have enough materials, so I'll need another nine. Plus six plus three. So I'll need eighteen more of these. Okay, nothing too hard. Just need to go to crafting or the work table. Heat vents. There they are. Okay, I'll need more iron. I thought I had seen a little bit more iron around here. Okay, I think this should be enough. And I need other heat vents. No, not that one. Heat vents. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I want this one. I need 18. Oh. Too bad. I need more. Well, I'll grab some more of those. Uh, those iron cages. Not cages, but, well. I'll grab one of these and we'll be fine. Here you are, so like this. I could just grab two iron bars like this, two blocks, two stack uh, two sixteen stacks or something. And we'll be okay. So we place these here, make the iron ingots there. Okay. Perfect. So here we are with the ME heat vents. We can now close our multi block structure. So one, two, three, one, two, three. Now the floor. And we will place right away our crafting CPUs back there. I've made two crafting CPUs. And I have a pattern provider just here, ready for assembly. Now we can add, this will be later on, one, two, three. Now I can add three more of these, and three more heat vents, and the rest like this. And something went wrong, I don't know what something is really wrong so I need to find out what's wrong so I'll be right back let me just try to fix this and I'll tell you what I did wrong okay I figured it out uh, there cannot be any uh, empty spaces within our multi block so uh, once I well I increased the number of prepping CPUs I only had one I only had two and one pattern provider so I moved to three crafting CPUs and three pattern providers. So if I right click here, you can see, and if I just go in there, you'll see that the two rows inside, well, here we can see crafting CPUs, but that's not the main point here. Those are filled up to the back. And now once you place the final block, ta-da, you have a multi-block structure. Then the next block that we'll need is the pattern provider. And the pattern provider is what we can use to make the sipes. We get the pattern encoder like this. Actually, the pattern encoder, I meant. The pattern encoder will allow us to make the sipes for the crafting CPU. And, well, for that, we'll need blank patterns. And let's check, check them on. So, blank, uh, 
no, not blank, blank, okay, here it is, any blank pattern, and this is a quite simple recipe, and we need some glass, some surface parts, some iron ingots, we can make this recipe up here, if we have nearly everything that we need here, if not, we just don't have that many blocks here, but I think we'll do. I think I had some glass here, just to show you. Yeah, we have a lot of glass, great. And we have redstone, I think this will be enough. So the recipe, this is how we use these work tables. So glass, glowstone, quartz and iron below. Okay, not too bad, so down here we need some iron, glass on the corners. Glowstone around and in the middle, surface quartz. Okay. We get our blank pattern. And what's this blank pattern? Well, we are going to use it in a really simple way. <clears throat> For example, to make. I don't know. This is just a start because we will do something more advanced further on. But let's make, for example, something as simple as. Mm, sandstone, okay? So, we a little bit of sand, and you all know the recipe for sandstone. So, the recipe for sandstone, you just need to place four sand blocks and you get sandstone. So, we need the sandstone, which is the end product, and the sand, which is the beginning product. Then, we just go to our pattern encoder and we place our blank pattern here, okay? And we get our sand blocks like this. So now we have sand. Oh, we don't need that. Okay, great. So now I just press encode. And now I have a receipt that cracks one sand out, sand sound out of four sand. So now all I need to do is right click here. And I have bang, ME encoded ME encoded pattern that cracks one sand sound with four sand. And what is this good for? Well, Let's imagine we have some kind of a site that needs sandstone. If I go here and write sandstone, hmm, I have some sandstone here, I'm going to grab it. Okay, look, I took all of my sandstone, but now I have the option to craft. Now I can go here, I click it, and I want to make one sandstone. I press begin, and it's done, and we have sandstone. So, really neat, I have to say. But this is just the beginning. Now we are going to make or use a brand new block that we haven't used here before, which is the ME interface. And the, the ME interface is quite nice. So I'm just going to grab some materials here and we could use the ME interface here. Let me just change this a little bit around uh, and show you how I'm going to make this pretty as well, by the way. And we'll use these machines. Maybe we'll make some power furnace, which also came in handy. Give me a few minutes. Okay, I went and did all the connections that I needed. So I used quartz conductive pipe to connect to my machines so that they are all powered. I had some power furnaces here. Uh, below the machines I have basic import buses. I don't need to move stacks or anything because this will be fast enough. And the magic is back here. So I connect it like this. I have a, another cable connecting to all my AME interfaces. I don't know if I need these, but well, we'll keep them for now. And now here's the trick. So if you want normal crafting recipes, you add them here. So, for example, I change my sandstone recipe to a piston recipe, and I put it here. But if you want to use machines, then you have to have an AME interface, and you add processing recipes. So I had this recipe, which is then using our pattern encoder, uh, and I turn one iron uh, pulverized iron into an iron ingot, for example. This one does cobblestone into stone, and this one does the refined iron into iron ingots. This is just an example, quite simple. Uh, and I have, well, place to configure all my machines. 
they will input these materials and they'll get output from below. And now I can have my crafting recipes here, so I can get back here and I can change this to view craftable. So now I can craft, for example, I can tell him I want to make 10 refined irons, for example, and then I'll press OK and it will craft, it will send the items into my power furnaces and it will craft the the, the, uh, the ah, refined iron. Now we need to make this pretty and for that, well, I made some facades or facades or whatever you call them, I don't have the slightest idea of their name. You just need to have some stone and cobblestone structure pipes and the assembly table will do the work for you. And you can use these both on buildcraft pipes. And <clears throat> you can see the difference now. Uh, this was not the idea. Okay, okay. And you can use this also on any cables. So I'm just going to do something here that I want to hide. So I'm going to change this over to. Yeah. I don't want to see any cables. I don't need uh, to to change this. Just aesthetics. But to be honest, I think that it will look much much better this way. So now I can place these these out. Let me just get away from my cactus here and climb up on this side. I think here will be fine. No, I don't want to be hit by cactus, so let's just place these. Okay, this looks a bit prettier, I think. Once again, this is not required, but I felt the need to do it, so. And now, to end this, I can have some covers, but I don't have any here. No, I don't have any craftable, but I have them. Yeah, I have the stone covers. So I'm going to cover these two here. One here, another one here. One here, another one here, and another one here. So. Now you don't see any cables. Well, the back room is ugly, but I want to have full access to everything. But you get the idea. These are all connected. There is a small trick here. So if you want to connect uh, the quartz conductive pipes, th these are build craft pipes, so you need wooden pipes before them so that they can accept the energy. And this is pretty much it for the basic uh, applied energistics uh, crafting. So maybe I'll make this a little bit prettier, I don't know, I'm still thinking about how to do it, but for now, well, I think this is done, now I need to start working on this and try to get, get the, ma the, the most out of it. So here we are, this project is started, now it's a question of, well, the day to day, everyday work on, on my on my on my base will I'll start inputting more of those recipes. There is one more little trick that I want to show you is that for example that you have one of these patterns that is encoded but you don't want it after all. The the way to remove them is to crouch and right click and it will be blank once again. I have to look for this because I thought it would be a machine or something but it's not. So this is pretty much it. So this part will be like a like a backstage part or something, I won't be spending that much time here, but sometimes I'll need to come here and tune something to add a recipe here or here, or change some cablings, uh, get some more energy, I don't know, something. But well, this is done. So I hope that you enjoyed the episode, I hope that you found these, this, uh, this build somehow useful and, and that you are able to use anything for the, uh, from this in your builds. I will be doing some more videos, I have some near future projects that I want to start as quick as possible because I'm pretty sure that the 1.6 speed of this update is, is almost ready 
and that means that uh, well, we'll start over. And I want I, I'd really like to go a bit deeper this time, so I have to speed things up. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the episode. Feel free to post any comments if you and likes if you enjoyed the video. And well, uh, I'll keep you posted with any news anytime soon. So bye bye and thanks once again for watching.